Welcome today. I'm here with Candace Bergen, who is the Conservative House Leader. What we want to do today is we're going to talk to you about uh, the canola crisis, specifically the trade actions taken by the government of China against Canada, and then the impact it's had on our industry, on farmers here in Canada, but also some other things that are going on and the Liberals continuing to finance the Asian Infrastructure Bank despite this latest attack on Canadian farmers. So Candice, can you maybe tell us like the canola angle, what's going on with that? Well, Tom, first of all, you're right. There has been a, a real attack actually on a number of sectors by the government of China. Uh, definitely the canola issue has been a big one. About two months ago, the government of China uh, banned uh, the export of canola to China. And they use very feeble excuses. It's not based on science. Canadian canola is probably the safest, the best canola in the world. We export about 40% of our canola goes to China. So this has a huge impact and it's costing Canadian farmers. And it's clear even from Beijing directly, they have said this really isn't about the canola. It's a political issue. Mm -hmm. And this stems from weak leadership that comes from Justin Trudeau. Uh, not only weak leadership in terms of how he is dealing with Beijing, but the fact we don't have an ambassador there, uh, much of the offensive uh, posturing that Trudeau has, has shown to the government and, and, and the way he's handled the government of China has been irresponsible and weak. And so we're really seeing this crisis hitting our producers. They were, they were planning and, and planting months and months ago. Many of them even a year ago are, are planning. And so they are uh, really in flux and not sure where, where to go and what to do with this canola. So I remember back, I think it was like September 2016, uh, Justin Trudeau went to China to secure canola interest. What he was saying was like a $2 billion industry. Oh, we went back through old news releases from the government and they keep repeating how well, he succeeded at getting us canola access. And now three years later, we basically see the opposite going on. The, the Chinese government, the China the government of China specifically targeting uh, our canola producers, knowing that it's a weak spot, knowing that we have weak uh, international leader that can't stand up to them. And then there's this, this connection to the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, and it's a really big bank that uh, the government of China is supporting. It's based in Beijing. It's part of what's called the One Belt, One Road Initiative. And it's something that Xi Jinping, the president of China, its kind of autocratic leader, has said, this is how they will take control of what they call Eurasia. And it's basically all of Central Asia, all the way to Eastern Europe. They have all these countries joining the One Belt, One Road Initiative, and this Asian Infrastructure Bank. And the thing that I find most galling is, Canada's joining this bank as of two years ago in a budget document uh, that Liberals actually are giving away $475 million of your money, taxpayer dollars, to join this bank, which I find just crazy. To build roads, bridges, and pipelines, uh, to, to give money to the Chinese government to build pipelines, not in Canada, not, not, in, not even in North America but for their in for China's interests. That's right. So it's, it's feeding their interests. It's allowing them to build all these projects. So they get to look like the good guys in all this because they're the ones handing out the money. And the, the thing that's really galling is exactly what you mentioned, the three pipelines. We know how much trouble we've had building pipelines in Canada and getting approval for them in Canada. But now the, the government of Canada is supporting the government of Beijing to support three specific pipeline projects. And you know, Tom, the other thing that I know I'm very disturbed about is there are Canadians in, in China right now, two specifically, who have been arrested under trumped up charges that are really nothing, and That's they right, are yeah. punishable. These charges are punishable by death. The Chinese government is actually penalizing Canadians, and the very lives of Canadians are at risk. So certainly, the canola issue, we're also seeing them blocking some of our other uh, agricultural products like pork, for example. Then we're seeing the, this galling example of the Prime Minister giving money to the government of China to build roads and pipelines, while Canadian lives are at risk of being lost. And there is no plan at all. There's, the, there's no ambassador. Mm -hmm. There's weak talk from the Prime Minister. He, well, let's remember, this is the Prime Minister who said he admired the basic dictatorship of China. That's right. Yeah. So he clearly admires Beijing. And for some unknown reason, he thinks that appeasing them is going to get him brownie points, get him something that we're not aware of. But we know it's costing Canadians a lot for his mistakes. Yeah. So I was going to ask you about that because it seems like since the government is now investing in this bank, money that we oppose, we actually tried to get them divested. So I moved motions at committee in the House to try and divest ourselves yeah. of this bank. 
So what could we do? Like you've been leading the charge on this and uh, Andrew Shear, our leader, has been leading the charge on it. We want to have a bunch of proposals, including ditching Canada's part in the Asian Infrastructure Bank. So I can ask you, what else could we do to support canola farmers and uh, our well, agricultural sector in Canada? Well, I think, first of all, we need a new government in October. We need to press reset on the relationship with China. Uh, I think that there, with, with the government of China, there, there is um, that need for, for strength coming out of Canada. There need, is, is a need to reestablish uh, some mutual respect. And right now, I mean, Trudeau is seen as the little potato. So I'm very pleased you've been doing so much work, Tom. It really has been a team effort in the House of Commons led by Andrew Scheer, but our leader announced that we would be pulling out of the Asia Infrastructure Bank. Very clearly, that's what we're going to do. And I think that there are other measures that we can take to reestablish a relationship uh, with China. But at the same time, we need to be focusing on relationships with our countries that we trust. And I think it's very clear, not just from what's happening in Canada, but around the world, that this is a government, Beijing is a government that cannot be trusted. I totally agree with that. I'm glad that we're actually having this public debate about whether Canada should keep participating in this bank with all the trade actions on our farmers targeting canola, but also now expanding to soya beans, perhaps, pork, pork. producers. Yeah. And it's just, it's a broad based trade action that the government of China is starting. So if you like videos like this, what I'm going to ask you to do is hit that Facebook like button, share it with people you think want to see this in the comments section, write down their names so they can get more information about what's going on on canola, what's going on the Asian infrastructure bank. If you want to see more things like this, let us know by hitting that like button. If you're watching this on YouTube, smash that subscribe button at the bottom. We really need you to be sharing this information, subscribing so you don't miss any of these videos out there. Candice, thanks very much for joining me. Thanks, thanks for Tom. doing this video with me. Hopefully we got more information out there for people to get in five minutes, all the information, everything they need to know about the Asian Infrastructure Bank and the canola crisis caused by the Liberal government. Excellent.